Good morning, happy Monday morning to everybody out there. So glad to be spending this day with you. And right now I am filming on Daylight Savings Time Sunday. Oh, right? Oh man, I hope on Monday morning you're feeling a little bit better than maybe you felt on Sunday morning getting up. Or maybe you just love those changes in times and spring's coming and it's all sunshine and roses for you. Either way, um, happy to be with you this morning. I'm here from the Redeemer Kitchen. Thought, hey, new setting, and um, I have. Uh, I'm going to do something today that really I'm not sure why I'm in the kitchen. It just seemed like a place to go um, to do this devotion, I guess, because I'm actually doing one that's going to talk about money again, which is weird because I'm not a big fan of doing devotions about money. I think it's a great idea. It's good. Stewardship team does amazing things and has opened up my mind about how important it is to think about our money. And maybe God is, is showing us something here because in the 12th chapter of Mark, which we're going to be in for a bit, my devotions are moving forward toward Holy Week. And I don't really want to get into Holy Week before Holy Week for some reason. I kind of want to save that for a little bit. So um, we're still in Mark 12. And it's one of these, again, fantastic stories that even as a little kid, when I read this story and heard this account, it just touched me. And I, it just weird that this is one of those that really just caught my attention and really stuck with me and was powerful to me as I was growing up. And um, I hope, again, hope you've heard this one before, but if you haven't, you're in for a treat. And it does involve some money. And you elder male ladies will definitely um, be connected to this one. I think you'll find that this one um, applies to you guys a lot and you guys use this one a lot. Um, so. Uh, and, and again, even though it's talking about money, the funny thing is, it's about so much more than money. So we're going to just get into this story and see what we have to see. So again, we're in Mark chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 41. And uh, I'll read it out loud for you. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. I'm just going to pause there to soak that in. Jesus casually sits down by where they put the money for the offering and just watches as people put their money in for the offering. And now at that time, a lot of people were not connecting the fact that this is God's son. This is, this is like the son of the person you're giving your money to, your temple offering, right? Uh, to care for his house and to, to supply the priest's needs and stuff. This is, his, this is God's son. Uh, it reminds me of those parables where like the landowner um, rents out, makes a vineyard, rents it out to these tenants, and these tenants start attacking the, sla the, the servants that come to get the crop and, and then finally kill the son. Um, for some reason, that connects into my head too. But, but this is God's son watching those people give their offerings. Now, we probably don't think about this, but God watches how we use our money too. And I'm not going to just focus in on offerings because again, like I said last week, if you watched my devotion last week um, about render under Caesar what is Caesar's and under God what is God, it's about money, but it's really not about money. And uh, the church doesn't need or want your money, but it's a fantastic use of your money. And it is a fantastic spiritual discipline to be generous toward God who is generous toward us. Um, and here in this story, we have Jesus watching people give their offering, watching what people are going to use their money for. That's intimidating, but God does watch what we use our money for. And when we think about it that way, it, again, stops being about money and starts being about us and our relationship to God. Um, and if you can't get past the money and onto your relationship with God, again, uh, maybe think about why that is. Because that's the key, is our relationship with God. So here is Jesus watching people put in their money. And from what this story kind of accounts, it does not feel like he's judging or like going, you're good, you're bad, you're good, you're bad. But he's looking not even at this. He's looking at their hearts, the hearts of the people giving. Because again, these money stories in the Bible, they're about money and generosity and, and, and that. But whenever God's involved, it moves past this this token, this thing that we put money, value to, it's a piece of paper, but it's important to us. He wants to know these important things. What do we do with them? Because that shows our heart. 
He doesn't care about the paper or the metal. He cares about our heart. And so let's see what Jesus finds at the temple as he's watching people give their offering. Uh, into the temple treasury, many rich people threw in large amounts. I think this is a custom. It sounds that way from the teachings that the, the rich and the, the well-off, they'll throw it in just to show everybody what they're doing and that they're doing the right thing. And good things can come of that, even if wrong motives are there, even if the heart's maybe in not the right place or quite the right place. Good things can happen. God can use that money. God can kind of work through that person's heart. Um, but Jesus is still watching. And he's looking for something. And I think we see it next. But a poor widow, poor widow without a husband, came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a cent, a fraction of a penny, right? And um, that's a tiny amount, tiny amount, a mite as the LWML calls it, right? A mite, it's just a mite. It's just a small amount of money, a little copper coin that she puts in there, right? And a um, very small amount. And I'm sure others are kind of going, well, that's not going to do much. But what's Jesus looking at? What is he looking at? Is he looking at this or two copper coins or a bag of gold? What is he looking at? He's looking at our hearts. It's looking at our hearts. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Now, from scripture, if we just look at that, we might say we should all go into destitute and give everything you have to the church, everything you have to the temple, everything you have in the offering plate. No. <laughs> we got to look bigger picture than that. And from what we hear and see is definitely not. We just saw that all that money, all the people that were giving, Jesus wasn't concerned about that, right? What he saw was not that she gave everything she had. That wasn't the key why she gave her everything she had because she believed and had faith and gave with joy to the God who was caring for her a poor widow she knew her fa who her father was and she was giving out of the content and generosity of her heart it wasn't about this it was about this and God through his son Jesus Christ looked at that widow's heart and said she's given all that she has, not because I told her to, not because I forced her to, not because she feels guilty, not because she's begrudgingly doing it because someone told her to, but because what else would she do? It's all that she wanted to do because it wasn't about this. It was about the heart. God watches how we use our money. And it would be good this week just to think about how does what we do with this tell us and others about what's going on in here. It's not about the money. Second devotion that has a money a component to it, but it's not about the money. It's about our heart. And money is just an interesting little data point because we put some value to it. We choose to put value to it. And so wherever we put that value that we put to it says something about us. So are you taking your dollars and giving joyfully to God in the offering plate? fantastic. We love that. No matter what the amount, as long as given with joy from a cheerful heart, a generous heart to a generous God, fantastic. Whatever amount, whatever's going on, two small coins, two small pennies, that's, that's awesome, as long as it's given with a joyful heart. Are you giving your money um, to charities because you believe in them and want to support them and see the good work they're doing? Fantastic. Are you saving and grabbing and holding on to these as if these were the end goal? As if these are what you want to put in your heart? What does that say? Where are you at? Are you finding as many of these as you can so you can take them and trade them in for other things that you want, like toys and um, uh, big boats and houses and bigger and bigger and better and better? What does that say? Are you grumpy with me right now because I'm even talking about men and you think I just want yours? What does that say? 
It's not about money. It's about the heart. And I hope we take time this week to think about where we put our values. And maybe you don't even think about money. That's fine. What about your time? Where does your time go? What does that say about your heart? Where does your attention go? What does that say about your heart? I know I have some studying and contemplating to do because there's some places in my life where my time, my attention, it's not going where it should. What does that say about my heart? It's good to stop. It's good to stop and reflect and think. And I hope that as you stop, reflect and think and hear that you go to Jesus. Whether it's Jesus, thank God for giving me a generous heart and I want to just give it back to you because you've been so generous to me. Or whether it's Jesus, I, I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. I don't know about where my heart is. I think my heart might be focused on the wrong thing. The beautiful thing about God is there's a never too late. Never too late. He is a God who changes things even up to the end. Think about that thief on the cross, the very end of his life, his whole world changed. Today, whether you're just a kid and your parents are talking about this devotion and you go, wow, I wanna be more generous with the small amount of money I have. Or whether you're um, 90, 100, 105, 110, 120, and going, hmm, boy, I really have been holding on to some things. Where is my heart? Today is a day. This week is the week. Think about it. Give it to God and check your heart. Because God loves you. And that's what he wants. Not this. He wants this. He's living there. You get to live with him. Can we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are so concerned about our heart and you love us so dearly. And even though sometimes we don't understand why it's such a big deal, of why we're connected and, and bogged down in some of the trappings of this world, and Lord, open our eyes this week and our ears, open our, our um, thoughts to, to see where our heart is, Lord. Whether we use money to gauge it or time or attentions or, or something else, Lord, help us to understand where our heart is and give it to you. Help us to see the bigger picture, not of all the things that we can get with our heart or, or things we can get with our time and money and attention. Let us think about you, Lord Jesus. Think about you and what you can do for our hearts and what you've done for our hearts and how much you love us completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it looks like, or sounds like the refrigerator just kicked on with the compressor so it's a little noisier in here hope you heard everything and um, thank you for joining me on this monday happy daylight savings time as we march through lent toward easter um, where's your heart where's your heart where's my heart let's care for our hearts together have a wonderful week so glad you're with us